harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. We have returned, William, but we're still in your house. Well, it's nice being in here, Dom. Isn't it just lovely? This is, well, you've always you've always had great taste in, in furniture and houses, and you make your houses very comfortable. And it's lovely to be here in your house recording the podcast uh, and being around this incredible houseplant. I'm showing it for the second time uh, in, in, in a number of weeks. But it's because we're racing around. We've been racing around like, um, like just... Like racing cars. Race, racing cars, like little miniature racing cars. We were just in Calgary. I'm going to be in Australia this time tomorrow. You're going to the east coast of Canada. Then we're meeting up in Orlando to do another convention with the boys, the Hobbits, and possibly um, moving around to different parts of the country doing the same thing. So it's, it's all go. And while we're doing all this, Dom, we're still we're doing the Friendship Onion. For all our friends, and our friends are lovely, lovely people. That's true. I should also just say, it would be a great opportunity here now, just very quickly, just to say thank you to everyone that was uh, reaching out to ask how uh, I was, because I recently did have COVID, and um, it was about two and a half days of, like, uh, rubbishy head cold, and that was about it. So thanks for all the well wishes, and um, I hope everyone out there who has also had or is currently having COVID, is improving. Anyway, hey, Billy, we've had some correspondence and we should get into it because not only do we have a ton of correspondence, but we have another fascinating guest to get to. But, hey, first up, riddles in the dark. Someone sent us another riddle. Have we got a riddle? Let's do it. Are you doing it or am I doing it? Here, I'll read it. I don't know it. We're only only just reading this in real time. Here's the riddle. We don't know who sent it in. But oh, it goes like is this. Is that the riddle? <laughs> yeah. No, here's the riddle for you. What has four letters, sometimes has nine, and never has five? What has four letters, sometimes has nine, and never has five? I originally thought letters was like, you know, letters from a postman instead of letters in the alphabet. I know it. I got it. I've got really? it. Really? Is it? What, am yeah. I right? Is it letters from a postman type thing? No, it's not, Dom. Is it actually alphabetical letters? No. Oh, it's some other way of thinking about the word letters. Is that right? <laughs> or is it letters? Is it alphabetical letters? Is it alphabetical? I mean, is it, Dom? You'll oh, wait. Go. I've got it. I think I've got it too. What, the word what, has four letters, sometimes has nine letters, and never has five letters. There we go. We got it. I got it slightly faster, but you got it nonetheless. Yeah. Well done, Dominic. Nice work. All right. Well, thank you, whoever sent that in. And Billy, you want to read this uh, missive from Brandon B? Well, Tom, I would like to. Brandon B from Utah says... Since listening to you guys so regularly, I've noticed that certain things you commonly say have started to rub off on me now, and I'm starting to say them as well, especially in my job as a high school earth and environmental science teacher. I'll say things to my student like, go on then, when they have an answer to a question, or that's brilliant, when they give a good answer to a good question, things like that. I've never said those phrases before. So it started me thinking, says Brandon B. from Utah, with both of you being friends so long, is there anything that either of you commonly do that you notice has rubbed off onto the other and now you say that as well? Mm. Well, I think there's been a lot of that over the years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I probably say on you go more than I normally would based on you and your wife quite commonly saying on you go, which is kind of a a phrase in terms of like, yeah, do do it. Uh, you, you have my permission to do it, right? Yeah, and a lot of people get confused with that. You remember I remember um the 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 surfer Oh Kalani. Uh, Kalani Rob, our friend Kalani was at at our house and I think he wanted to go outside for a smoke or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he said 
can I go out here for a smoke? And my wife, Ali, said, yeah, on you go. And he had no idea what she meant or what she wanted him to do. So he was like, am I getting sent home? <laughs> on you go? Yeah. Like, to me, it's so natural, but a lot of people, it's just like, that. those words don't shouldn't be together, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And then you 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 do a lot of kind of fun little sayings that become sort of habits for like in League of Legends you you say just have a good time. Yeah, just enjoy it. Just enjoy just it. Just enjoy it when you get killed and um what's the other one? Oh, when the game starts very often I'll scream. Into the fray. And I've noticed everybody that we play with now says those phrases. <laughs> yeah, just enjoy it. Well, just enjoy it. it. What's the other one? Oh, um you hate to see it, you know, like if your friends just got beaten up by the enemy team, you're like, Oh, you hate to see it. Oh, you hate to see it. Um I I still or at least um borrowed one from you quite a lot, which is I think this is even back in New Zealand, but you were very funny one day talking about something that was tight, 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 tight. Remember, you were doing that quite a lot. You're like, oh, it's tight, it's tight, that thing tight. So now any time I actually just say the word tight in a sentence, I'll certainly in my brain, I'll find myself going tight, 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 tight. So there we go. It happens. Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of those things with me and you, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Peeling the onion. Dom. Yeah. Housekeeping. Oh, housekeeping. Do you remember the song? Here we go. <laughs> housekeeping. How much fun are you to keep the house, house so clean and true? And true. Okay. All right, well, wait. Now. Do you want to read this uh, question from Steve? Hi, Steve. Well, it's actually Steve Ripley here has got something. Um, remember, we did the Lord of the Rings riddle, which was actually quite difficult. And we had the lo- lovely Casper Rife on, who obviously knows as much about Lord of the Rings as anyone I've ever met. And Steve Ripley says, Casper is correct. In the book Fellowship, Aragorn takes Frodo to the hill of Seren Amroth in Lothlorien, where the Eleanor flowers grow. This is where, in the books, Aragorn and Arwen earlier vowed their love for one another. So when Frodo finds him here, Aragorn is lost in that sweet memory. Much, much later, after Aragorn dies, Arwen returns to is it Keren Amroth or Seren Amroth? Not sure. I'll say Seren Amroth. And passes away there too. So Arwen passes away there too. Also, the Eleanor flowers of Lothorian made a real impression on Sam. And he names one of his daughters Eleanor. Ooh. Tremendous deep dive into Tolkien law there. That was, that was pretty hardcore. So Casper was actually correct when we were talking about that and uh, Lothlorien, the Eleanor flowers do actually grow there. Oh, nice. Well done. Well done, Steve Ripley. Thanks, Steve. Well, look, listen, let's, let's answer one last question before we bring on our fantastic guest. Um, Go on then, Dom. There's a question here from Grace in Texas. Hi, Grace. It says, I turned 22 this week on April 20th. Well, happy birthday. Um, and I was wondering, if you had to pick... What would be your favourite birthday celebration that you've ever had and what sort of fun things did you do on that day? Okay. Mm. Something that's actually happened or you can make up your own? I don't know. I think I assumed that that was what's what's been a birthday that you've enjoyed the most, but it could be, I guess, something in the future, right? Um, (coughs) Ah. I mean, we had some nice birthdays in New Zealand, right? The the amazing thing about us all being in, in New Zealand was, you know, we had created our own social group with the cast and crew. So when a birthday came along and there wasn't a, an extraordinary amount to do in some of these cities where we were filming, everyone was just like, well, it's Billy's birthday tonight. We're all going to the bar and it's, it's kind of a built-in party, you know? So we, we did have some pretty humdinger parties down in New Zealand. Though. We certainly did. We did, Dom. Um, and uh, you don't ask a lot from people, but I think you do like people to celebrate your birthday. Yeah. Uh, so we've always had uh, good ones, and I, I've bought over the years some wonderful, wonderful gifts. 
Oh, it was stunning. Incredible. Yeah. And don't think that's going to change because this year I've all, I've already thought of something for you and it's going to be wonderful. Talk. Well, Billy, that's great. But I, I have said this for a few years now and I do subscribe to it. Um, just This is just me personally. It's, it's not the way that I think about other people's birthdays. But for me personally, of course, as the years go on, you want to celebrate the day that you were born. That's great. But it's kind of the decades for me now. I'm going to have a big 50th birthday. I'm going to have a big 60th. I'm going to have a big 70th, hopefully 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, whatever. But the, the years in between, of course, it's nice to go out for dinner, nice to see friends. But it's the big ones, the big decades now that I make a big splash over. Well, do you know what then, Dom? I just won't give you that gift this oh, year. I've ruined I'll it. wait. No, you're absolutely right. I'll wait till you're 50. And uh, I, can only, I can only hope that uh, he won't pass away before that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's five years ago. I've, uh, wait, I've ruined it. Oh, no. <laughs> need to supercharge your hiring? You need a super hiring partner. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. I tell you what I love about Indeed, Tom. It makes hiring all in one place very easy because of things like Instant Match. Mm. Candidates that you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in a search, according to US Indeed data. Mm, that's fantastic. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash onion. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash onion. Indeed.com slash onion. Terms and conditions apply. Pay per qualified applicant not available for all users. Need to hire. You need. Indeed. Billy. Yeah. The thing I love about public goods products, mm. and they make things like stuff to clean your sink or to clean your floors mm -hmm. or maybe soap and stuff. It's all kind of uniform. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into your bathroom downstairs, the bathroom upstairs has the same kind of products. It, it creates a nice kind of flow in your house. That's right, Dom. Public goods is the one-stop shop for sustainable, high-quality, everyday essentials made from clean ingredients at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. Everything from personal care and household products to coffee. Toilet paper, shampoo, pet food, and more. Public Goods is the new everything store, thoughtfully designed for the conscious consumer. Mm -hmm, of which we are. Rather than buying from a bunch of single product brands, Public mm -hmm. Good members can buy all of their premium essentials in one place with one beautiful streamlined aesthetic. I love it. Public Goods searches the globe to find clean, healthy, eco-friendly, and innovative products, which I absolutely love. My favorite one of theirs is their soap. I've got some like Lovely. verbena lemon soap or something. Oh, William, it's fantastic. Knowing what's in your products and where they come from is extremely important. Now, we've worked out an awesome deal. Receive $15 off your first public goods order with no minimum purchase. That's right. They are so confident that you will absolutely love their products and come back again and again that they are giving you $15 to spend on your first purchase. Wow. Mm-hmm. You have nothing to lose. Just go to publicgoods.com slash onion or use the code onion at checkout. That is P-U-B-L-I-C-G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash onion to receive $15 off your first order. Well, we are joined by Olympia. La Pointe, is that how you say your last name, Olympia? La Pointe, or is it like a silent T, La Pointe? Ah, good question. It's La Pointe in English. In French, it's La Pointe. La but Pointe. I go by Olympia La Pointe. Olympia, we're very excited because you, you have done a lot of things that do a lot of crossover um, interests of Billy and I. We're, we're obviously both interested in space. I have what I've always assumed is some sort of disability with mathematics. So I really want to talk to you about that because maybe you'll be able to uh, help me or diagnose me or cure me. That would be a, a fascinating thing. Probably all those things, Dom, are because Olympia has written books on it and everything. There's nothing she doesn't know about math. 
and um, rocket sciences. Well, before we do that, Olympia, I mean, very often what Billy and I do is we kind of read out a, a prepared little, you know, speech about what what our fantastic guest has done with their life. But I always feel like it sounds better coming out of the guest's own brain. So would you be willing to just kind of tell us what you do and what's going on in your world? Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I am Olympia Lapointe. People know me as an award-winning rocket scientist. I am the author of educational books, Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com. I help people overcome fear and embrace mathematics and science to create the solutions for tomorrow. A lot of people have seen my TED Talk, Reprogramming Your Brain to Overcome Fear, and I am proud to be a person who has helped launch 28 NASA missions into space and write books to help people unleash their brain's power in all the different areas from education to corporate worlds to uh, to our regular, just everyday life. So I'm excited to be on your show today. Wow. Olympia, absolutely perfect. That was a great intro and it makes me very excited uh, about talking to you and asking some questions. My first question has to be about NASA. It would be my dream to work at NASA doing anything. You know what I mean? Cleaning the toilets, making tea. I just made Dom a cup of tea there. Ooh. So what was your, like, how did you, how do you start working for NASA? Do you know what? It's interesting. When I was six years old, I went to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and there I was there for a uh, field trip. It was a school field trip. And I saw the rocket engines and I saw the pictures of the men on the wall who were launching rockets. And I looked at the pictures and I told myself I want to be just like the men. And I didn't realize how challenging it was going to be as a woman, because typically women are not in the rocket science world. And being a woman of color, uh, people don't know that one out of 31,000 African-American women or women of color get a PhD in the mathematics or science or or become a rocket scientist. And so when I was six years old, I was looking at these engines and Jet Propulsion Laboratories Mission Control, and I told myself I wanted to be just like those men. But uh, I, I eventually went into rocket science by a fluke at first, and this story is really interesting. Uh, I failed algebra, geometry, calculus, and chemistry when I was in school. <laughs> you, you failed all of those? Failed, failed. I laugh now because obviously I had to take the courses over and then I learned to reprogram my thinking. And there was a teacher in 11th grade who helped me understand the the blocks that I had in my own mind towards understanding calculus. And when I sat down with him and, and learned the mathematics and science and learned the difference between the, the rate of change and uh, different the differentiation and like the instantaneous moment, I realized they were all the same, but different vocabulary. And the the moment clicked in my head where I realized it's all how we see things and how we name things. And if we can figure out the pattern to see the same phenomenon happening, all we have to do is learn the mathematics and science in the way that someone can understand it. And so I looked at mathematics and science as a language instead of it looking like something that was like crazy looking. Mm -hmm. I started reprogramming my brain to be able to see it as a language. It was communicating what was going to happen in the future. And if I could understand what it was saying, I could be able to know what solutions existed in the future. And so I started looking at it like that. And I eventually went to California State University, Northridge, where I earned my bachelor's degree and graduated. Um, top of the class because I was tutoring other people in mathematics and science when I was in uh, the in the campus. And afterwards, when I graduated, I didn't know that I was going to go into rocket science at all. In fact, um, I I just wanted a job with health insurance at first because I, I had graduated and I thought to myself, I, I need to be able to take care of my health and I need to have a job that has regular health insurance. And it was 1998 at the time. I was 21 and I'm, I'm 45 now and I'm very thankful and proud of my age because I've, okay, yes. And so I'm very proud because it 
every single year is an accomplishment to be alive and to be here and to to go the next level. And I was 21 at the time and um, I was applying around to different places. And one of my previous um, schoolmates uh, joined the Boeing company and he was working there, not in the, uh, not in the science realm per se, but he was looking at the configuration, like the drawings and making sure all the drawings were accurate with the right measurement uh, units and making sure there was no typos on the engineering drawings. Yeah. And so I asked him, well, how do you like working there? And he enjoyed it. So I decided to put in an application. And when I put in an application, I called up the company and I said, I think you're looking for me. <laughs> nice. And they're like, who are you? And I'm like, Olympia LaPointe, I think you're looking for me. <laughs> and it was probably, probably a very... Uh, so for sure type of approach to, to finding a job, but they like, like, who are you? And I'm like, I can fax you my resume. Take a look. <laughs> that uh -huh. it. And I got the job and I, I originally started in a, in a, it was a group of an accounting and I did that and I finished the work really quickly. And there was this man down the way that understood really advanced mathematics and science. And I was taking graduate school courses at the time. And I asked him, what he was doing and if he could help me with my graduate school work. And I ended up having him as my mentor and he would show me about his engineering designs and the work and applying the mathematics and statistics to reliability engineering. And I was, I was doing what no, I'm doing very, what very few people do, which is volunteering my time to help him. Cause I was just really just right. naturally curious about how do these numbers work? I, I've learned them all in books but let me see how it looks in real life. Let me understand how the mathematics and the numbers actually uh, take form. What do they do? How, do? how do I actually solve something with these numbers? And when he showed me this, I worked with him for a year. And then the management came back to me and said, Olympia, we have moved you to this next group. Your official title is propulsion scientist, which is a, it's it's the official name for rocket scientist. And I was 21 when I started at the company and a little bit of time after 21, maybe 22, I was a full fledged propulsion scientist. And that's how I got my start in, in rocket science. Wow. And then I was reading that at one point, I think it was during you uh, working at NASA, your job was to predict when a potentially catastrophic event might happen in in space on a space shuttle is that right could you just kind of yeah extrapolate yeah. that a little bit oh my gosh you asked the greatest questions and thank you for for knowing my background like of course. that thank you um i use mathematics and science specifically statistical probability to calculate the probability of a catastrophic explosion within flight. And uh, this show, your show here, I think I'm going to tell your audience really what that means because I really truly believe your audience will appreciate this. Uh, that job required the ability for you to look at every single duct, weld, joint, material structure and figure out how the hot, pressures and gases and temperatures were going to affect how this particular particular engine moved and how it would move in a way that was designed versus a way in which would rupture and break apart with a fire. Mm -hmm. So I use mathematics to flow the energy through every single one of the lines and, and orifices and, and manifolds to figure out the location that something would explode. And if it would explode in that place, how many seconds did we have before we could shut down the fuel supply to that location? Or how many seconds we had to be able to give the command to mission control to launch those astronauts off the ship. And this is all done with math. You're not, you're not going there and looking at it and you're basically sitting with a pen and paper 
And you can work all that out with numbers, right? Yes. And Crazy. there's two ways to do it. It's There's what we call event sequence diagrams, where you literally have to see what is going to happen. It's like the chain of events. Uh-huh. You see the chain of events, how they all play into one another. And then you assign a probability to each one of those events to know what more than likely was going to explode first or what was going to explode and be the most catastrophic. And it was all done within pictures and numbers. And we were quite accurate. And this is from failing math and failing your sciences <laughs> up to what, up to like 10th grade? Yeah, I was, I failed, yeah, the 11th grade, 11th grade, yeah. Until you got to 11th grade, that's mm-hmm. incredible. Well, that lets everybody know, it's never too late, you can always turn yourself around. True, and with that in mind, Olympia, I mean, I Billy's known me for 20 years now, and w- one of the defining elements of, of my personality, really, is my inability to understand maths, or just do simple mathematic uh, sums. I mean, I've, I now know how to split a bill and or a check and create, you know, work out what I should leave for a gratuity. But like right now, just in the moment right now, I don't know what seven plus four is. I have to go eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like I have to do that. And just to, I've said Billy, I've told Billy this a few times and I told it to my dad because my dad was trying to teach me maths. Let's say for the sake of argument, I'm trying to add 17 to 34. What happens is my brain creates a picture of 17 little tiny pieces of white chalk. And then it finds a little picture of 34 pieces of white chalk. And it tries to bring them both together and then count how many is there. So that's why when someone asks me to do something that is relatively simple with maths, I find myself creating this strange image in my brain, this visual image in which I'm having to count them. That can't be right, right? Yeah. Well, do you know what is interesting? You and 90% of the American population is the exact same. And it is similar numbers in the UK, actually. Ooh. I think it's like uh, one out, uh, actually one out of 10 people really excel in mathematics in the United States. I think it's, it's, uh, I, it's slightly different over uh, in the UK, but this is the deal. 90% of the people in the United States have a horrible fear of mathematics. Mm. And it's like, it's like trying to, like you were saying, put those numbers together in your head and you're like, this seems overwhelming. How do I keep track? I mean, it's just like all these numbers. How do I like, how do I do that all in my head? Yeah. And uh, what I learned from failing <laughs> is, a great teacher. is that it is a great teacher. And what I learned from failing is not to look at the numbers as numbers, but look at them as patterns. Oh, I love oh. that sound. Yeah. Yeah. The sound of another sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business so that upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we've been using Shopify on this podcast, and we have noticed our merchandise shopping, growing, building. Did you buy that t-shirt? I think I was giving this for free, (gasps) but I do enjoy it. And you can buy all of our merch with Shopify on our podcast. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Mm. Reach customers online and across social networks with the ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is possibility powered by Shopify. 
Go to shopify.com slash onion, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash onion right now. Shopify.com slash onion. If you're like me, you're always looking to make sustainable swaps throughout your home. Maybe something that's not wrapped in plastic or doesn't use any harmful chemicals and hopefully doesn't involve chopping down any trees. Mm. Now, luckily, it seems like there are more and more alternatives every day that I like to use in the house and trying to keep our earth beautiful at the same time. Mm, my new favourite sustainable swap is Real Paper. Mm -hmm. Real makes a sustainable toilet paper that uses fast-growing bamboo and is always shipped in plastic-free packaging, even down to the tape on the box. The great thing about bamboo is that it's a grass, and just like a lawn, it can be cut and regenerated without harming the plant or the soil. So they're able to harvest the same plant over and over instead of cutting down trees. And this is certainly preferable to the usual plastic wrap toilet paper that comes from our old growth forests. The conventional stuff contributes to deforestation and habitat loss, all for something that we use once and then we just flush it down the toilet. Well, precisely, William. Real paper is available in easy, hassle-free subscriptions or for one-time purchases on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with free shipping in 100% recyclable, plastic-free packaging. If you head to realpaper.com slash onion and sign up for a subscription using my code onion at checkout, you'll automatically get 30% off your first order and free shipping! That's R-E-E-L-P-A-P-E-R dot com slash onion or enter promo code onion to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. So let's stop flushing our forests and give Reels tree-free paper a try. Zero trees, zero plastics, zero compromises with Reel. So just like we're scared of mathematics, a lot of people are scared of the future. Yeah. Like... We're, a lot of people are scared of what's going to happen with artificial intelligence. They're yeah. scared about what's going to happen within the technology, the, the space travel, the climate change. I mean, these are like a whole lot of things that are in our future. Quantum Internet. How, and the, if you watched uh, the most recent news of people being um, people having a hologram on the International Space Station from NASA shooting someone. Uh, 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 shooting a hologram up. So these are things, technology that's coming in the future. And in order to create the future that we want, we have to not be scared of the future, but actually make effect effective decisions to create the future that we want. So we don't create a future that we don't want. How do, how do you know what decisions are right? How do you, how do you know? It was, that's a great question. You don't know. Uh, and when when I was launching rockets and I had to create those pictures of the pathways in which the the fuel and the the fire and the the high high pressures, the pathways that it was going to go, that was going to launch the rocket and not explode it. I had to create the pathway of where it shouldn't go. Right. It okay. was like two different universes happening at the same time. And the multiverse. Both events existed, but depending on what you did, you chose the outcome that you wanted. Olympia, we're get we're getting into quant we're getting into quantum here, aren't it's we? Quantum. This is quantum mechanics. It's like Schrodinger's cat a little bit. This is waveforms, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. So these things all exist, and your decisions chooses the universe that you then live in. Yes, because That's this exciting is exciting stuff. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> this is this is very exciting for me here. <laughs> it is for me too. I can talk days about this. I love days. This. Not only days, weeks, hours, years. <laughs> Good, keep going. This is great. We're going to sort this out. I keep telling Dom, I reckon I'm going to discover something and with quantum mechanics at some point in my life. Yeah, he does say that. But I don't, I don't know what it is yet. But we'll, okay. we might work it out right now, Olympia. So I see, and uh, when I was reading 
uh, about you, you also link it to spirituality. And everybody I've spoken to, because we have spoken to Brian Green about um, quantum mechanics and string theory, and I've spoken to other scientists and mathematicians, but then I've also spoken to spiritual gurus, etc., who are all saying the same thing, but neither of them want to say they're the same thing. So Ooh. I'm kind of excited because it feels like you might be, maybe you're not, I'll let you speak for yourself, but you might be saying they're the same thing. Do you, I, I, I can only explain it per what I have witnessed and experienced mm -hmm. and can mathematically explain. Okay, great. I'm a very spiritual person. Everyone is different. Everyone has a right to believe in whatever uh, they feel comfortable mm -hmm. believing. Uh, for me, I believe in God. And I believe that science is the ultimate proof that God exists and it is the extension of God's principles in action. Right. And so if I look at just the science, let's say I just, just look at the science part, I realize in my case, I had multiple futures that existed at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people may not know my background, but I will tell uh, my background so the audience knows. Great. I grew up in severe poverty, and it was very rough growing up where I did in South Los Angeles in the 1980s. It was the middle of the crack cocaine epidemic. It was where gang violence was. It was very tough growing up there. So I had three futures in front of me. I went to that jet propulsion laboratory school trip where I saw these men in pictures launching rockets. And I told myself I wanted to be just like the men that were launching rockets. But I also could have become a high school dropout. And I also could have become involved or been uh, a victim of gang violence because of where I was living. Mm -hmm. I had literally, this is just the three futures that I can count and I'm conscious of. I had three futures in front of me. Equally probable. But because I chose to make a decision at six years old to go to the path that will allow me to eventually learn and master science. And I looked at science as a way to, to always just learn and grow and, and learn these new things about the universe. And you could always, always learn something new. Because I chose to go that route, even if I was failing, I then crossed out the path of dropping out from school and being involved in and gang violence because I was always studying all the time, always inside, always learning. So in my case, I had three futures in front of me and it was because I chose and made the decision using my frontal brain lobes to go the direction of mathematics and science that I eventually picked the future that was waiting for me. Now, Albert Einstein was brilliant. He said that no two people will experience the universe the same way because they're in two different locations in the universe. So they not only will experience time and space differently because of their different locations, they cannot be at the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like where you're sitting right now, no one can sit in your exact time and space except you. Mm -hmm. No one on the face of the planet because you have then selected that spot that you're in at this very moment. The next five minutes, no one else will be in your position because only you can obtain that place in time and space. Yep. So when you make a decision, you claim the place that you're going to. So you are the person who ends up in that time and space and no one else is there. Now, this is how brilliant this this latest book is. I do, and I talk about quantum physics. And quantum mechanics is the mathematics that goes with quantum physics. Mm -hmm. 
So I created this mathematics to show how our decisions count. We have six decisions to navigate us to where we want to go. So we claim that spot. When we make these six decisions, we create, it's almost like a powerful force field around us that, and I show this mathematically, that literally attracts opportunities. And this force field literally is navigated by making a decision based on your faith, how you see yourself in the world and contributing to the world, Mm -hmm. uh, to your identity, who you choose to be, how your integrity is formed and how you choose to live out who you are. Third, by your uh, intent, how you change how you plan to impact environments and not let it impact you. The fourth is by how you learn the decision that you make to learn new things and throw out that fake news. The the fifth is how you use your resources. So you multiply it. And the sixth is how you have relationships with people, including yourself, not, not only in the present moment, but in the past and in the future. And when you make these six decisions, it creates this type of bond with your future self. We each have that moment in time where we're going to be successful in the future. Every single one of us has a moment in time and several moments in time where we obtain what it is that we're aiming for. When we make these six decisions, we then jump through space and time to communicate with the future version of ourselves. So we become quantum connected to ourself in the future. So we get to where we need to go. Makes perfect, perfect sense. <laughs> it does. I mean, I think Einstein actually said, didn't he, that there was no, there is no time. There's no death because you're still there. You're just over another kind of hill on the sort of time and space that, you know, so he, he didn't think it was a a linear that it's just moving. He he's like, Oh yeah, this is just all just this net of that you're creating, you know? So it does, it totally makes sense. So where do we find this book Olympia? Oh gosh. You can go to my website, answersunleashed.com. And underneath books, you see the, the science of attraction. And that is underneath answersunleashed.com slash book three. Uh-huh. You can see and pick up uh, the, you can actually download the latest version of right, my yeah. book. You can download it from any place in the world. And I'm excited because my first book, Mathophobia, deals with how people can embrace science and mathematics and actually in really learn it. And my latest book, Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want, deals with how you make decisions so you can jump to the future that you choose and then come back and make the six decisions to get there. And I'm absolutely sure that that is true. And actually, Dom is probably the greatest person I've ever known at doing that sort of stuff. He is incredibly strong in his mind, probably what you're talking about, the frontal lobes, that he'll make a decision. I've seen him do it through our our, our long friendship now, that he'll say, like, a, a silly thing. One time we were sitting on the floor and he said, I'm going to work out how you pick yourself up off the floor, turn around and get into a handstand. And I was like, you'll never be able to do that. And within a few months, he'd done it. Wow. And, like, with the with the... The wild things, the show that he was telling you about, he he felt passionate about, I want people to start liking these insects and spiders and snakes and all Mm. nature shows are always either, you know, the big animals or the cute animals and he wanted to do this show and he sort of probably the way that you're talking about but without him knowing it sort of made that happen, you know saw himself in that future. 
Yeah, I never really, I never really connected too strongly to to manifestation or what I was doing until people started to point out to me like, oh, you seem to be quite um, well versed at manifestation, and that, and I was like, what what does that mean? That just sounds like a kind of L.A. kind of cool and groovy hippie speak <laughs> thing. And then people, you know, like Billy would be like, well, you said this and then 18 months later you did it or you said this and then you put the wheels into motion to do it. And it's funny because like if I look back on certainly some of the more benchmark moments in, in my in my life and in my career, you know, when I was, I think, between the ages of 13 and 15, I had an iconic poster of Lord of the Rings in my bedroom and I would look at it Every, all the time, multiple times a day. And I would think if they make a film of Lord of the Rings, that has to be the number one thing that I would want to do. Because at that point, I always wanted to, wanted to be an actor. Obviously, that turned into doing rings. And then I wanted to live in Hawaii. That's another thing that happened. I just wanted to live in Hawaii. I was like, Hawaii, they surf, the food, there's chameleons that live there, wild. It's out in the middle of the Pacific. It's kind of a, you know, one of the most isolated archipelagos of islands on the planet. And I was like, I just want to live in Hawaii somehow. I, I want to work that out. I got a job that had me move to Hawaii for like, you know, three plus years. And um, it just, it, to, to your point, Olivia, it's like the more you do something, the more you find positive affirmations in things that you are doing and the, and the success, quote unquote, in achieving those things the more your brain is inclined to do it in the same way that in a reverse fashion, I had been telling someone at this convention all weekend that he needed to stop saying the word hate. And he kind of looked at me kind of laughing. And I was like, nah, man, you should not be bringing that word, that word into your existence. It shouldn't be moving through your system. It's not good for you. It's just a negative thing. Say something like, I find this really challenging, or this is something that I'm struggling with, or this is something that I'm trying to get better with. But don't say, I hate this and I hate that because it gives power to that thing that has too much control over you, you know? Does that sound about right, Olivia, uh, Olympia? Manifesting, what you're saying is true. We have the ability to manifest things and I'm going to take it a step farther and I'm going to take it a step that is really concrete. We bring about the future that we want and we manifest it based on our decisions. The decision that we make on a daily basis is what, is what allows our tomorrow to be the way it is. Like, for example, if someone is, let's say someone is like a, a, a person to save every single day and spend time and, and create that computer software. Look, look at the, like the founders of Facebook and Amazon and like all these other things. They spent years, <laughs> years inside dedicating their life to these computer algorithms that eventually paid them billions. So, it's like that decision-making process of what are you going to do today that's going to invest in tomorrow? So like when I was younger, I saw myself like the men in the pictures, but when my thirties, before I wrote my book, I would often go to bookstores and I would pick up the books and I would bring my own picture and I'd put it on the other books and I'd look at the book as if it were my book. And so I literally put a picture of myself and then put the name of my book before it was Mathophobia. I created my fictitious book cover before I even wrote the book and I put it on the wall and I kept looking at the cover of the book. It took me three years to write my first book. And I kept looking at that book cover every single day. And it was my own fictitious book cover that I created, but it reminded me I'm going to do this and I'm going to write this book. And it was like, it was it was the thing that changed my life and it led me to my TED talk and it led me to create my book series and my Answers Unleashed platform. But not only that, I, I learned that when we start programming our mind to where we're going to go, we then start making decisions that will map up to that future. Like for myself now, I, I used to teach as a math professor for, I was in rocket science for 10 years. I left and then I started my company. And then three years after that, I created my first book, but 
I was really doing my best at the time. And I started part-time teaching as a mathematics professor, teaching students. And as I was telling my students about all these theories about how their brain works and like, oh, well, look at it like this. Or when you look at it like this, it helps your brain do that. And they're like, Professor LaPointe, you need to write a book about this. And my students were the ones that suggested that future. And I'm like, maybe I can. And then I started putting up the book picture on the wall, going to my local bookstore, just walking to my local bookstore probably like every day, just checking out the different books and finding out how they did their contents of it. And that led me to create my book publishing company where I create books. But that same type of process of manifestation can be applied at any point in our, any point in our lives, any point. For me now, I see myself being, it, this isn't necessarily happening yet, but I see myself as a person behind a desk a broadcast to millions of people where I'm describing science in a way that's really clear for everyone to understand. And millions of people are tuning in on a regular basis to see whatever it is I'm presenting at this desk. And it is helping people understand the truth of how their brain works and how they learn and how information comes with science. Olympia, we could talk to you all day. This has been a fascinating conversation. Like, truly, I, I thought that maybe we were going to touch upon one or two things, but everything that you've talked about, I'm, I'm like, oh, I have 25 more questions for you. But um, <laughs> unfortunately, we, we don't have any more time. We'd love to have you come back and maybe we can, we can do a, more of a deeper dive into space or into quantum or into mathematics. And in the meantime, I'll try and improve on my... Um, on my relationship with numbers. Thank you very much. That was really wonderful. And we'd love to have you back on. We'll, we'll read your latest book and uh, maybe you could come on and, and tell us some more. It will be my honor to be on your show again. Thank you so much. Well, Dom, what a fantastic chat with an incredibly interesting Olympia Le Point. Well, Billy, do you remember a few episodes back we had uh, an entomologist gentleman on that was talking to mm. us about insects? And I said, I would love to be trapped with you on a long haul flight. When Olympia was talking, it made me think, God, I bet Billy wishes he could be trapped in a room with her for 12 hours to talk about quantum law and talk about yeah. spacecrafts and NASA and mathematics. She was a, a very fascinating person. We'll have to have her back. So interesting. Yeah, I, I wanted to get deep. We ran out of time, obviously. But I mean, just that that, that sort of idea of that, that I think came from um, uh, Einstein, that time isn't really a sort of linear thing. And like, so is all these different future Dom Monaghan's all over and it's your decisions that slots you into one or slots you into another and so really, really interesting. Brilliant stuff. And yeah, let's see. Let's let's um get an opportunity at some point to bring it back and maybe we do a deeper dive into one specific element as opposed to an overview of what she does yeah. because there's just so much to talk about with Olympia. And I would recommend people go listen to our uh, TED Talk and get those books if you if you found that interesting. Great yeah, get stuff. those books from her website. We'll put her website information in the show notes. Guys, remember... If you have a tongue twister, if you have a riddle, if you have a food item that you want us to eat on Billy and Dom Eat the World, get in touch with us. You guys dictate what we're going to do with the show. You can leave questions, comments, and concerns on our YouTube channel. We would love it if you would rate, review, and especially subscribe to the show because the more subscribers we get, the more we can continue to make the show. And don't forget, if you want to look incredibly cool, get some Friendship Onion merchandise at thefriendshiponionpodcast.com. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Toodles. Harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright. I'm your oyster, baby. You're my pearl. 